Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Goodwin. I am uh, chair of the Montpelier DRB. I um, like to call this February, uh, April 4th, uh, 2022 <laughs> meeting uh, to order. Uh, and uh, I will introduce the, I'll let the members introduce them from starting on my right. Kevin O'Connell, board member. And Catherine Burgess, board member. And on the Zoom platform, we have, uh, let's see, uh, here, Abby. Abby. Hi, Abby White, board member. Okay. And Jean. Jean, are you there? Hi, Jean Leon, board member. And Joe. Hi, Joe Kiernan. And that's it. That's it. Yep. Okay, um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Meredith. She will update us on our remote meeting procedures here and uh, take it away. Sounds good. Uh, if you need a printed packet, there's sure. one in there. I got it all. If you need right it. Okay. Uh, all right, so I am going to share my screen here. Um, this is especially helpful for those watching via Orca Media, um, but the so the share screen part um, for everybody else who's on remotely, um, please just pay attention to what I say. Um, all right, so for those of you viewing this meeting over Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's development review board meeting using the Zoom platform. Um, you can either take this link and type that into your browser. Um, or you can call into this phone number and use this meeting ID. If you call in on your phone, you'll be able to hear everything. You'll be able to make comments. You just won't necessarily see um, what we're doing with a share screen. Um, if anyone has problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I'll be watching that email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, note that turning on your video is optional. For everyone that's attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise um, and, and let the rest of us hear what's going on. Um, please reserve the Zoom chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. If you have something substantive to say about the meeting, about any of the applications, please raise your hand, either literally um, if you've got the video on or using your raise hand button on the Zoom um, and the chair will call on you um, at an appropriate time. Um, I'll also be keeping an eye on that and, and we've got a couple of different people trying to, to snag that and make sure that we catch everybody. Um, we have several people on today, but not too, too many for comments. So I think we'll, we'll be okay. We don't have to restrict comment time. Um, if I find out while keeping an eye on my email that somebody is having a hard time accessing the meeting, public is having a hard time accessing the meeting, and we can't get them to get through, um, we will have to continue the hearing to a time and place certain because we have listed online access as a viable option for getting into the meeting. I will now hand this back over to the chair. Yeah, just a, a couple of real quick points on that. Um, so as we progress out of this uh, pandemic, my understanding is that these procedures will be changing in some way or another. Um, and I think over the next couple of weeks will be a conversation among board members about what that looks like. Um, but also, I think that if the public has strong feelings about um, the way things have been happening and moving forward, uh, you know, they should contact information is there for Meredith. And we'd like to make sure that your thoughts on how we address this reopening um, are incorporated. So um, without further ado, the approval of the agenda, I will now entertain a motion. Second. Second. Okay, motion now. by is us Kevin. Not on vacation right now. Look at all my friends. Caitlin, Caitlin, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have a motion for the approved agenda for tonight's meeting and a second by Catherine. Um, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Oh, 
Joe? We still have her. Yes. Jean? Yes, yes. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, Abby, gotcha. Thank you. Yes, from Abby, Joe, Jean, yep. Kevin, and Catherine, and Rob, myself, uh, we have an agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't have any detailed uh, comments from this evening. Um, I did uh, just return late last night from traveling abroad, so uh, but Kevin has been in touch with Meredith on uh, some of the details about this meeting, so please excuse uh, any slowness. Uh, I'm a little tired, <laughs> but I'm here, so... Um, Next item would be um, review of the minutes from the March 7th meeting. Um, I had one minor typo here. Um, should be a comma between Gene and Joe in the lists, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> just in case there's a copy and paste, which is I would do. Anyway, so we got that one. Um, any other comments or changes from the board? No. Oh. All right, we have a motion for approval. So moved. Motion by Kevin. Second. Second by Catherine. Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jean? Yes. Rob votes yes, unanimously approved. We have minutes for March 7th. Um, okay. So the first order of business at the core of our meeting here would be the 114 River Street application. Um, and I'm guessing we have two people here tonight. Um, would you guys care to come up and introduce yourselves to the public and the board? Hi, I'm Ben Jenkins, Jesse Harper. Yeah, make sure you try. I know it's hard because it's one microphone and there's two of you. Just do your best. Okay. 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 Uh, so I know there's a number of people on the Main Street project. We'll just. That'll be a while. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah we, we have to swear them in per hearing. That's two separate hearings. Got right. It. It's two separate hearings. Uh, just as a double check, is there anybody on remotely tonight about the 114 River Street project? I don't think so, but I'm just double checking. Nope. Okay. So, um, would you guys introduce yourselves again? <laughs> yes, I'm Ben Jenkins. I'm Jesse Harper. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're going to swear you in, um, for this meeting and, um, I've got that right. <laughs> So all those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Thank you much. Okay. So we will now get into the heart of your application. Um, I think first, Meredith will provide a brief overview of uh, why this application is before the board, um, and then uh, you will have an opportunity to sort of discuss your project in detail, and then we'll uh, sort of go through the staff report and answer sure. some questions here. So. Sounds good. Okay, so um, this 114 River Street project is here before the Development Review Board um, for, for two, well, really one reason. It's because part of the use um, I determined was a conditional use there is some I, I had to go through the site plan aspects of this and that's in the staff report but they're not changing any of the site plan there's nothing being changed on the outside um, so that's sort of in their pro forma because you have to go through it but the real meat of this is the conditional use um, the the business um, is a cannabis cultivation business and that really it, we, we don't have a specific category that goes into that it's not just the growing um, there's also a drying aspect and then trimming those plants after they've been dried and harvested and then putting them in some degree of packaging um, it's not going to be sold out of here so it's not retail um, and so trying to figure out where it was going to fit 
it really fell into two categories. There's the greenhouse aspect, and I've put the specific definition in the staff report. And then the only other place really to fit the other aspects was in this light manufacturing, where they're processing the plant to a degree, right? Very mildly, there's no special water, there's no special fuel, there's no special waste like there would be for a brewery, right? Where you have all that waste that the, the sewer system has to figure out how to manage. Um, there's no big special outside equipment. And so the light manufacturing really seemed to be the best place to put this and really the only place to put it. Um, and under um, the state statutes, we couldn't just list it all as agriculture. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's where I put those. So the light manufacturing is a conditional use, so it has to be here before the board. Um, and then going through that conditional use analysis, we had all the different, you know, city departments take a look at it. Um, there was one comment from the police department just saying that they really want to make sure that the business has tight security in place, which makes sense. Um, and applicants have, have addressed that in the application, but that's one thing to look at. And then really the only other thing I spotted is maybe a, a issue for discussion is potential impacts on neighbors from like noise, light, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little bit of a oops in my staff report because I forgot to compile all of those comments into one place in the staff report and I just sort of put my conclusion. Um, so feel free to, to discuss that a little more than you might normally yeah. because I forgot to summarize that. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that makes sense. So I guess I'll maybe you summar have a further sum question? Summar summarize real quick. Would it be fair to say that the proposed sort of activities don't fall squarely within a listed use. Correct. However, by going through the conditional use process, we get to sort of play it safe and do well, the analysis of like what type of. So, know. Sort of. So the zoning administrator has the authority to make a determination that a use or uses are enough like mm -hmm. uses that we have in our table to fit them in those blocks. Mm -hmm. Technically, because this is coming before the board, yep. the board can override what I made a determination of sure. and make their own determination separately. Um, you know, if you decided, no, it's not light manufacturing, it's something else that's not even a conditional use, yep. you could basically boot it back to me to issue an administrative permit. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's here because I determined that part of it is a conditional use, Absolutely. which requires board approval. Right. All right, so Jean, I, you had a question about this. Did, did your question get answered yet? Uh, is this has this been approved by the state? Um, uh, but your question was about about the uses. Also, yes, I, well, because it's, I, I think Meredith clarified um, because it's not a listed use. Um, you guys just clarified it right now. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you all want to give a sort of overview of your project and what you're, what you're envisioning and give us some background here. Sure. Do you want to jump in so you can kind of leave off with security as well? Or? Sure. Um, that would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's basically a cultivation space for cannabis um, where it'll be trimmed and, you know, dried and trimmed and, you know, packaged for you know, sale to retail. Um, as far as the, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, Make sure you've got the microphone oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that close <laughs> enough? Excited. Okay. Um, and, and as far as, you know, the, the concern around security, that's, that's important to us, um, as well as, you know, state regulators. Um, so there will be video surveillance, there will be access control on all entry points, um, with individual unique user codes. So, we will be able to audit anyone that comes in or out of that building, um, both visually and by unique identifying number. Um, there will also be an alarm system uh, that is central station monitored, UL listed, five diamond rated central station monitoring, basically the, the pinnacle of central station monitoring, which would contact owners, you know, managers, anyone on the call list if there was an intrusion, as well as dispatch uh, police forces uh, if, if there was a, a break-in uh, after hours. So there'll be motion detection, 
door contacts, um, you know, any windows would be protected as well. Um, it would be very difficult, uh, if not impossible, to be in that space undetected. What about from the standpoint of the uh, restaurant, which is will be underneath? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do they get incorporated into this security blanket? They're not, I would say. Um, are there access points or, or weaker points uh, with that interface between the uh, restaurant and the uh, and, and the farm, for less of, lack sure. of a better term? Ter there are yeah, there are no there are no um, interconnected spaces, so there's no way to get between those two buildings except by exiting the building and, and going around to another entrance. So they're really sort of distinct physically. Um, I, I, and House of Tang currently is operating as takeout only. There are no guests there, haven't been. And my understanding from you know the owner is there. There's no intention to bring that back. Yeah. Um, do, can we throw the? You guys submitted a uh, amended site plan, 114 River Street. Let me set up. Put that up. I think it's page. Um. Towards the end of the application. Is this the, the parking plan? Yeah, I just was like to just get an image yep. up there for you guys to yeah. sort of describe okay. yeah. where well, things I'm are going to be. I'm and... pull it up. On okay. The I just wanted to make sure I was there before I did your screen. That's it. Reduce people from me. If I may, just may. Yep. Um, also to address. Uh, you know the question generally around security you know it, it's very important to us that the place is secure that we're able to control who's in and out of that space um and also understand our, our own employees that are that are in there um, and just have full transparency and, and auditing of, of that process yeah all right so this is the building obviously so you're you'll be occupying a portion of the building is that yes. correct like what, what what portion of the building maybe it's on here but just for clarity yeah. can you yeah sort of... um the so between the arrows that are not pointed towards a shaded area yep. yes between that arrow and the, yes that arrow yep uh all the way back yes so ex essentially that quadrant yep. um is pretty much the space yep yep like the river, the half of the building that's like closest to the river. Uh, the uh, more in the middle. The middle. Okay. The, the middle, middle back. The second middle floor. back, I would say. Oh, gotcha. yeah. okay. okay. Um. Yep. On the second floor. The second floor. Yep. Got it. Um, okay. And so, and so, like, what sort of equipment? Like, what's going to be in this area? Area. So, like, the layout, just so we get an idea of the. Activity. Yeah. The, the specialty equipment. It's mostly going to be lighting. Um. You know, we'll have tables to catch any uh, runoff water and stuff like this. It'll all be plumbed, so there's no leaking going to the second floor or the first floor, of course. Um. But yeah, um, just lights are going to be this the most specialty, you know, equipment in there. It's not going to make noise. Uh, no lighting will escape the building. We're going to have every window and every entrance uh, sealed off, so there's no light leaving or entering the building. Um, and as far as noise, there's the lights don't make any noise. So um, as far as those kind of impacts, it's going to be very minimal. Um, smell, they do make charcoal and specialty uh, filters to kind of really reduce and clean the air to kind of take away some of the, the smell that's going to be exiting the building. So is this just growing, or is it going to be sort of drying and processing also going on? Yeah, the whole array of start to finish, basically. We'll be growing the plant and processing it there and packaging. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Or any, you know, flammable substances. It's, it's really just a natural drying process. So there, there is no sort right. of should be careful on second layer of processing that, that right. that's an entirely different license and uh application that one would have to file to do that yeah. as far as the volume of uh I could do, you you would say but uh like can you just provide a sense of scale for for like, this well i mean what about like would it, are you thinking like with regards to like traffic like how often no just like the pro or? like uh the amount of material coming in and you know in, in and out like what 
Uh, are you asking for how much product we'll produce? Yeah. Like annually? Sure. Or? Sure. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> it's to be determined in the space, but um, I mean, yeah. we have some projections. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to pull up my numbers. We just kind of reconfigured the whole so space. I guess maybe, so all right, maybe the easiest way is like, uh, you know, when a, when a truck comes to pick up the finished product, uh, how frequently and how big is that truck going to be? Uh, well, we'll be harvesting probably every two weeks. So we're going to have like, every, you know, rows of lights. And yeah. we're going to have it set up so we're at least harvesting probably every two weeks, okay. at least one row. So, okay. I, I would say not a truck. Yeah, I mean, we're talking yeah. yes, small amounts. Okay. Uh, we're applying for a thousand square foot cultivation license. Yep. Which is it's the bottom. It's the smallest, the smallest tier, tier yeah. there That's is. Uh, yeah. so, we, so I would say it's pretty small scale. So like every two weeks, a personal vehicle yep. load yep. would be yes. taken to a wholesaler, retailer, to a retail. or some other location some other business for it to be retail correct precisely yeah. Yeah. um all right joe or, sorry um rob i have a question yes um can you talk a little bit about um odor control it sounds as if you are not going to be having fans that you're going to be doing passive drying so is that true can you talk about both the the drying process and the odor control Yes, uh, I mean drying. We will be using fans. We'll be uh, regulating the humidity levels in the uh, atmosphere for that. Um, and as far as smell, yes, anything that's exiting the building, we're going to have uh, going through charcoal filters, and, and they have other kind of microns filtration for for smells and different debris. Just cleans everything up. So we'll, we'll use as as we need to to really clean up the air. And so is that something that's is that detectable outside of the building or is it is it not uh it can be yeah you can get a whiff um i don't know if there's ever been complaints from the dispensary that's up the road um by the trading company mm -hmm. um nothing I mean, I, nothing since i've been here I've been exactly here about i used four to years. work there and every once in a while i'd get a whiff from outside and those weren't even the air wasn't even scrubbed that well so uh it will be smelt you know, the, the smell will be there. I don't think it'll be anything too invasive. Okay, great. And also curious just about energy use and how, how you're approaching that, trying to manage that. Well, the equipment we're using is all LEDs, which is, you know, 40% more efficient than the HPS and other okay. lights that they had um, previous. Uh, that's one stab we're taking at it. Um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna try to be as efficient as possible. I don't know if you want to weigh in on this. Yeah, I would. I would say as well that you know, like the method of cultivation is very low impact on on water as far as other methods. Uh, so there's not a lot of water waste. Um, most of it's absorbed into the plant. Um, so, you know, we're, we're taking, you know, we, we care about these things ourselves uh, mm -hmm. and are definitely taking those steps. I, I will say that LED lights are a lot more expensive to buy, <laughs> uh, but we believe it's the right thing to do. And we encourage and anyone getting into the space to, to make that choice and spend that money because it's the right thing to do. Oh, well, reduce your energy costs down the road, too. Exactly. Also, yeah, <laughs> all of the above. Thank you. That's helpful. You have a question, too, when you're there. You're welcome. Gene, go ahead. Abby just uh, asked what I was going to inquire about. How, I'm just curious how many LED lights in the space? Um, the way we mapped it out, it's going to be right around 45, 40 to 45 lights. OK. Um. So I guess I think I'd like to sort of move back to the going through the make sure we get the issues here in the staff report. I, sure. It's a great overview of the questions and whatnot. And um, uh, so I guess just poll members of the board, you know, we had a little bit of discussion about, you know, this being a required that the use being required to have conditional use in this district. Uh, I very much agree with the staff report on that determination. Um, any other thoughts from board members on you know how we got here on that that determination? Yeah, I'm seeing nods. Yes, that uh, we're good there. Um, so we talked a little bit about 
the security, um, which, you know, was sort of a comment from the police department um, to board members feel like they got enough information on the, you know, questions about security to, um, you know, maybe feel that the police department's concerns are addressed. Do we have any more to do on that? I think you've explained it very clearly. Uh, just to confirm, since we're sort of on that topic of the staff report, so it's this is an entirely uh, sort of internet based system that you're using, or do you in in anticipate having any sort of security staff there as well? Or this is all, um, yeah, it's, it's all the remote sensoring and um, access point monitoring? Well, when, when staff are present, there'll be staff there. Okay. Um, and but there will always be access control so even if staff is there it's still a locked you know place you can't just walk in even if people are there yeah um so control from that standpoint um and again always you know video monitored 24-hour recording um as well as you know unique user code entrance for authorized people um in terms of uh, the monitoring type, uh, it would be a dual path. It would likely be uh, communicating over cellular as well as IP. Um, so there would be two ways for the alarm system to signal out any issue. One of those being cellular where there's no wire to cut. There is no way to disable that. Um, so I, I feel that it's a, a really strong plan. So, yeah, I think you've discussed the security and I'm, I'm satisfied and I feel confident with your plan. I'm just wondering if we need to require as a condition for something sort of like detailed um, sort of about security. Well, the, the state issues certain perimeters that we have to follow um, uh -huh. through the application process. So, and I'm guessing just given our background um, that we'll probably overstep and probably implement more regulations that are being required. Around. Yeah, I'm not sure we need to do that necessarily. Um, you know, it's not the 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 DRB's evaluation of it is to make sure that um, the project is not going to have a disproportionate or unreasonable burden on the city's ability to provide police fire protection and ambulance service yeah um given the sure. you know not not that they have the highest degree of security possible but that they're not creating sure. an undue issue where there's gonna be an undue number of police calls which sure. you know they have their own system they have their own yeah. pretty robust system got it Does that work that makes sense to me Thank you. And I, You're welcome. Um, if it's helpful, I will comment that this. I find that the um, that the state of Vermont, the Cannabis Control Board's uh, security requirements are, you know, more than adequate, and but not overreaching. I mean, I think they yeah. did a really good job of finding that right balance of what's needed and not you know, over regulating and, and providing, you know, just an expensive burden on, you know, business owners that are just starting up. Um, so I, I, I think they've done a really good job with their requirements of, yeah. of making sure that those needs are met uh, as, as a requirement for licensure. So I guess in this, you know, I'm just thinking in the same way, if we get another one of these, it's just nice to be having easy box to check to say like, okay, they, they were, like we say, New development, it's like they're gonna have to get a wastewater permit. You know, it's like a yeah. You know, I mean, they, they, they have, they have, have to, to. Yeah. So, but what do you? I'm I just mean, saying. I'm just wondering if we should say the condition is is that you know they obtain appropriate approvals, you know, from the Vermont Cannabis well, Control Board. I mean, you can, but we don't. We actually got rid of our. We have our thing where if they get that state okay. permit we say okay you've automatically met our standards sure. we no longer have the you have to get that one because yeah. they ran into problems with that sure um i mean you could probably no. ask for a copy to be put in the file no i'm i'm, I'm good i'm just okay. curious i'm curious of uh you know just this is new yeah <laughs> trying to find, questions I just, yeah it's completely new. trying yeah. to find parallel parallel yeah. st standards to you know make right. sure that 
I mean, what we're doing this evening is precedent setting. Yeah. Yes. You know, and uh, it, it, so far it seems like it's a pretty low key kind of uh, yeah. kind of exercise, sure. which is good. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's the idea. idea. Yeah. We're, we're going to see more of these. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah I, I think that's totally reasonable. And and we want to make sure that you know what we're doing is is a good precedent for you know moving forward. Like sure. Yeah. Um. Next, Kevin. <laughs> I've lost. <laughs> yeah. We got um, security. That seems to be the number um, one security, issue. Security. Yeah, I mean, do you want to just go through the? Con do, do you want to just go through the conditional use standards at this point? I mean, like I said, the site plan stuff is all yes. basically not applicable because they're not yeah. making any changes. I mean, we've we've, dived, dived, we've taken a dive into this. No alarm bells are, are, yeah. are ringing. Uh, I think it, it makes sense at this point to go through the criteria. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be a couple of you know. Be yep. some things we want to look at in a little bit further depth, but uh, I see no reason not to yep. proceed to that. All right. So, um, page ten of the staff report is you know sort of listed out the conditional use standards. Um, first is section thirty three hundred two, which is the community facilities and utilities. We talked a lot about security. I think we're good there. Um, from the information you provided, I think that when it comes to water and sewer, we're not seeing any much of a change from what's currently happening um, at the site. So um, not much of an issue there. Um, section 3303 is the next one, which is traffic. Um, you know, I think we talked about uh, the loading and the, and the volume. Uh, I'm, I'm satisfied there. Um, and um, so maybe the last part to, you know, about that is there were a little bit of discussion about parking spaces um and uh was there not yeah uh well they meet they they, they meet the criteria yeah they totally meet the criteria that was i mean that was one of the few things in the general standards yep. that had to be evaluated yep. um and there's more than enough parking in that parking lot existing parking spaces mm -hmm. to meet all the needs of all of the existing businesses including one that's listed as existing but i guess is not actually sure doing business anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're fine for the parking needs. Yeah, so plenty of parking, traffic issues. We talked about security. Um, the um, character of the neighborhood. Um, if you guys want to tackle, talk, talk, talk about that one. Uh, I don't think there's any residents within, uh, you know, sight or smell or anything really yeah. of uh, what we'll be doing. So I well, think you have to go across across the two in order to yeah. to get yeah. right. Ac across and left or right and yeah. up sure. and away. Um, yeah, so very much commercial. It's, it's mostly commercial there. It is mixed, That's but inside, yeah, yeah. On that side, it's all commercial. Commercial slope and... style is over there. <laughs> uh, Vermont Security is on the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, insurance, Noel Johnson, and you know, there's it's pretty commercial over there. Um, and I also think the building is, you know, pretty nondescript. We're not going to have a sign up there saying anything. I mean, I mean, this is about as public as it's going to get. What we're doing right now yeah. um, for that space. So, yeah, I think it should have uh, very little impact. If I was to make a comment about anything that the city might do, yeah. uh, and you know, on that line that you were saying, like to add on precedents and things to think about, would be, you know, lighting, right. like on the street. Yep. No, no, like like efficient lighting. Oh, just, if the city has any efficiency standards, uh, we you know we do that, we do for the outside. Yeah, no, there there are there are actually standards for exterior lighting. If you were wanting to do exterior lighting, trust me, I'd be asking for all sorts of information from you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you it, didn't propose any changes, okay. so I did not dig into it. <laughs> yes. and lighting lighting is a is an issue with uh, a, a mm -hmm. number of applications okay. along that strip. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, if, if lighting is part of the plan that has not been addressed here. We should get that on the table. Yeah, no, nothing at this point. Um, and actually, the lighting I was referring to was the use of the lighting in the cultivation. Just the LED growing light. So you, from an energy. energy yeah, from an energy, energy perspective, perspective, the city might, yeah. you know, think about that as something as a, of a requirement if you're allowed to do that yeah. to make sure that you know LED is, is is the method that's used because it is so much more efficient. There are cultivators that want to use different types that are way more you know, energy intensive. Yeah, so, we don't yeah. usually get into stuff inside the building yeah. for the zoning. That's building permit. Okay. So, 
um, we try to try to not dig too deep inside sure. people's buildings. Yeah, and maybe that's maybe that's an overreach. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, that would just be the only thing that came into mind. Yeah, you know, that would be just a positive impact. I know efficiency in Vermont gives out rebates. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They do. Um, yeah, I, I think that the, also the costs usually sort of benefits you for making that choice and yeah <laughs> long term like, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 if you're short on money up front yeah. <laughs> not so much there's so much more efficient than the alternatives sure. totally uh, your payback is probably not that yeah great. agreed of course yep. i don't know what the price of the of the initial unit is but right. yeah. i know how efficient they are and yeah. how quickly you recoup your investment mm-hmm. yeah uh-huh. So the the economics next, are on our side. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so the next issue under character of the neighborhood, you know, sort of an area about architectural com- compatibility or no, like you said, not even lighting, no ex- changes to the exterior. So I don't see that as a, as an issue. Um, and um, so yards, lot coverage, <laughs> landscaping also were no changes to the exterior. Um, okay, there. Um, character of the neighborhood in general, I think we're seeing like no, no flags. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm not um, seeing anything from Abby or Jean or Joe. Everybody's yeah, kind of mute and them. chill. All right. Sounds good. I would, um, I think entertain a, a motion to sort of move this meeting along to the next item. Anyone has any? So, so the whole move to uh, close, uh, close, close the, the close the public, public hearing and hearing. move yep. to deliberative session to after deliberative. <laughs> after the close of the public meeting. That's yes. correct. <laughs> yes. And uh, with that being so elegantly <laughs> stated by you, Meredith, I will I will make that motion. Okay. Second. Second by Jean, I believe. Kevin, how do you vote? I vote yes. Um, Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jean? Yes. Um, and Rob votes yes. That unanimously is approved to take this up at the close of this public meeting um, and the public hearing is, uh, is closed on this application. So just as a translation, okay. that means that the board isn't going to take any more testimony from anybody on your application. After we finish all the other public aspects of the meeting, the next application, um, the board will have a deliberative session privately with nobody present, no Zoom, no nothing, um, to make the decision, um, hopefully tonight, I'm assuming tonight. Um, And then we'll have 45 days to get you a written decision, aiming to do that much, much sooner, as long as the everything happens tonight. Great. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> well, two minute, two minute break. Absolutely. Yep. So it's been requested for a two minute um, recess here. Um, so we'll just round up and uh, convene at uh, seven forty five. Forty-five. Call this meeting uh, back to order, and um, our next order of business on the agenda is um, for one forty-nine Main Street, and um, applicant is um, O M Fisher Home Incorporated, and um, who uh, will be <laughs> taking the lead on presenting this application this evening? Well. We've got a whole bunch of people if you want to look to who to swear in. Yeah, <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. I just was trying to identify who the who lead the, person who the lead person would be uh, sort of going through the application. Well, Dawn's on as the applicant, Dawn Pulowski. Okay. So she's on tonight. Um, we have Brian Lane Karnas from DeWolf Engineering, who okay. often speaks a lot on the projects. And then there's the architecture um, team, Tom Bachman, Dan Wheeler. And then when we get to, I mean, there's, there's, it depends okay. on what part you're talking well, about. Thank you for the transition. It's a little harder to see and identify who everyone here. is when they're I'll not angle. here in the room. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right. So first thing we have to do on this is we have to swear anybody in that's going to speak on this project, um, which um, uh, in many ways, how, how do we best yep. do this? Uh, well, yep. so, so, yep. so um, 
Catherine, Gordon, I think you were on about this application. So maybe if you can turn on your video um, so that we can just see you. So we've got Diane Soffrin and Lou Friedland, Dan Hassan, James Finley Sheriff, Brian, Lane Karnas, Don Pulaski, Tom Bachman, Dan Wheeler. We're all planning to um, either talk on this application or at least be be here and involved in this application and potentially talk. So we should probably swear all of them in. Okay. And uh, Meredith, don't forget we have uh, James Finley Shearer, the landscape architect here. Uh, I think I said that, but maybe I said it too fast. Okay. <laughs> Dan Hassan is the development consultant to uh, OM Fisher. He may or may not speak, we'll see. Okay. Okay, well. Anyone that might possibly provide testimony tonight, would you please, um, uh, you know, raise your right hand um, to be sworn in as a witness? And um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Awesome. All righty. Thank you very much. Uh, so at this point, uh, Meredith, would you give us a very brief overview um, before turning it over to the applicant for their presentation? Will do. Um, so I'm going to keep this as brief as I can. Um, this is an application for an addition at 149 Main Street on the back of the current Gary residence, um, which in addition to being um, a resident, it's a historic building, um, and so there's some complications with that that the applicant can can speak to, but those aren't really complications that the board needs to worry about. Um, so this triggered major site plan because of the size of the addition. Um, so that is the number one main reason that this is before the board, and the number two is because there is a request for a waiver, a very slight waiver, a quarter of a foot of the left setback distance. Um, the, the site is constrained in part by the current site design because of that historic building and the current um, access driveway location all up at the front of the parcel. Um, so there's been some jiggering around in the back and that's one reason they're, they're requesting that left setback waiver. Um, there's some, some other points that are raised in the staff report for discussion um, are stormwater, some landscaping points, and lighting. Um, so there's there's a fair bit to talk about, but the major things are that setback waiver um, and that this has to go through the board for major site plan. So you're going to want to make sure you touch on all of those site plan sections and at least have a brief discussion on each of them. Absolutely. Okay, um, someone from the applicant like to give an overview of the project and maybe address any items that uh, you may feel like you can prior to the board having some questions. Hi everyone, uh, this is Don Plowski, the executive director and of Owen Fisher Home, and we're very excited to present this project to support the community. <clears throat> with a great need of continuing care for the folks with cognitive loss. Um, we want to continue our mission and vision that we have started over 103 years ago. We've been working on this project since 2016 and we have a great team on this project and I'm gonna pass it over to Brian because he is has done a majority of the work for this permit. Great, thank you, Don. Um, Meredith, is it possible for me to share my screen so I can point and talk at the, yeah. at the same time? You, you should, you you wanna share your screen, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. go right ahead. I, I uh, usually have that okay. available. It seems, it seems to be working. Uh, yep, it is. Alrighty. Hopefully I've picked the right one. Is everyone seeing the uh, the overall site plan? Yes, looks yes. like it. Like, uh, big old hand here. <laughs> Um, so th this is the, the proposed site plan um, for the project. Um, the existing Gary residence is, is uh, with this sort of diagonal hatching here. Uh, Main Street's over here. Uh, the existing driveway is to the south of the, uh, the Gary residence here. 
Uh, if anyone's been down the sidewalk here, probably one of the most noticeable things here are some of these very um, beautiful large trees right along the um, the frontage along here, which are all being preserved as part of the project. Um, current, so I'm just going to give a general site overview, and then I'm, I'm going to hit a couple of things that Meredith um, mentioned in terms of items that were highlighted in the staff report. So. Um, one of the things we're doing to sort of improve the site access as much as we can, um, given the existing configuration of the lot. Um, right now, when you come in, the parking is against the south uh, edge of the parking lot. So we're flipping that around to the north edge. So you have a straight shot to come in and out, um, <clears throat> which will improve, you know, any deliveries that need to come in and out of here and also access for emergency vehicles without having to come up and around um, the parking spaces. Um, honestly, given given what we're working with, that's about all we can do on this particular. And um, because it's in the UC three district, it's it's actually um, um, exempt from parking minimum parking requirements. Um, although I do acknowledge that the rules say that if we provide parking, it has to meet the other um, <clears throat> the other requirements for parking in the in the uh, regulations. Um, this gray hatch area here is the proposed addition. 11,300 square foot footprint, um, single story. The majority of it's a single story. Um, this portion of the building right here um, is both a, um, a connector, an entryway, and then a, a connecting ramp because this, the finished floor elevation of this new building is um, up quite a bit above grade. Uh, in order to meet the requirements of the floodplain regulations. So in order to have an at-grade accessible entrance, um, we need a fair amount of ramp inside then to get up to the, the grade of the actual um, residential portion of the building. Um, there's also this portion right here will be a new stair tower. Um, the existing egress from the back of the Gary residence is an old iron fire escape. Um, it's inadequate for current building code and, and certainly for this particular use. Um, so one of the goals of the project was to improve the egress from the existing Gary residence. So um, all three floors of the Gary residence will have access to the new stair tower and elevator. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Tom, but I think elevator um, in the in the stair tower. Um, OK, uh, Brian, there is no elevator. No elevator. I'm sorry. Stair tower only. There is an existing elevator in the current Gary residence that serves those three floors, but there's no elevator associated with this project. Okay, thank you. Egress stairway. A um, couple other site highlights. Um, we're proposing a, a maintenance storage building at this location, um, screened dumpsters at the back of the parking lot. Um, there will be a, a walking, a concrete sidewalk walking path around it. Um, and there's two sort of patio areas. This is like a a memory garden, um, and this will be sort of screened from the parking lot, a kind of little private outdoor gathering area for the residents. Um, and then an open patio with some granite benches uh, out in the back here. So that's the general site overview. Um, and let me just get a couple of the things from the staff report that Meredith had called out before. Um, the first being the, the setback waiver we're requesting. Um, so it's a little hard to see on this plan, but on the left side of the building here, um, this dashed line is the 10 foot side setback. Um, so you can see right at this corner of the building here, um, basically the face of the building just, just clips over the setback. It's, it's less than the three inch waiver that we're requesting, quarter of a foot, three inches. Um, but the reason we're requesting the three inch waiver is because um, you know, we, this building has to relate to an existing building, um, and there's always a little bit of challenges in, in getting that way out to work. Um, so we may, exact location of the building may be like an inch or two different uh, by the time it gets laid out in the field based on the, you know, um, relationship to the existing building. Um, so more than anything, we're requesting that waiver just to give us the flexibility to have, if the building moves a couple of inches, um, to the north during construction that we're not um, creating a problem with the setback. Um, but, you know, even at 9.75 feet instead of 10 feet, it's going to be, you know, really not noticeable to, to anyone who's in the neighborhood. Um, it's kind of behind, all of this is behind the existing building. So the, the main 
view of the property from the public vantage points is going to remain the historic residence and these large trees from the front. Um, and then secondarily, this patio and then tertiary, the building back here where we're requesting a setback waiver. Um, so we believe it has minimal impact. Um, you know, we've, we've addressed our, uh, the actual waiver criteria in the application. And if the board has questions, I'm, I'm happy to address that some more. Um, I, I think the, the site lighting question is, is pretty easy to address. Um, so we didn't have, let me just quickly bring up the site lighting plan. The site lighting plan inadvertently didn't include all of the um, cut sheets for all the fixtures, um, but essentially almost all of, well, all of the lighting is either building mounted or mounted on um, the underside of um, pergolas that are proposed at the, the two patios. Um, so in the building mounted lights, there's three types listed here, SW1 through four. Um, so SW1, two, and four are all the same. And we did have a, a cut sheet on there. They're, they're downcast, fully shielded LED lights. Um, SW3 is actually the same thing, only smaller. Um, so here is the cut sheet. We've updated this legend compared to what was submitted. Um, but this is the cut sheet for the, the larger SW1, 2, and 4 lights. Um, so this gives you a sense of the distribution, you know, um, vertically of the lighting from that fixture. Um, this is the SW3 fixture, which, as I mentioned, is really the same, only smaller than the other two. Um, so that um, hopefully addresses the question uh, regarding lighting. And, and obviously we can go through the lighting in more detail if there's, if there's more questions. Um, and I think the other major thing that Meredith mentioned, uh, well, let me actually, let me talk about one thing that Meredith didn't mention um, <laughs> down to the next site plan. So this is the utility plan for the project. Um, there's this, this line right here, this gray line with the DE notation. Um, there's an existing brick arch culvert <clears throat> that the city owns that runs through the property here. Um, and Meredith had pointed out in the staff report that DPW has some concern about the impacts of the projects uh, on, this, on this culvert. Um, so I just wanted to update the board that we did have a meeting with Kurt Monica last week. Um, to discuss this, and the applicant is is definitely willing to coordinate with DPW um, to make sure that this um, culvert gets rehabilitated um, during the construction of the project. So um, we talked to Kurt about how to work that into the plans, how to make that happen with the bidding and the contracting, um, and we're on our way in terms of of coordinating that effort with the city so those can happen at the same time. Um, and then I think the other one was landscaping, which um, James, if I could ask you to just um, address Meredith's comments on landscaping from the um, staff report, and then then I think we'd open up to questions from the board. And and I'm sorry about the errant sentence. This is I meant to say this at the beginning. There is a have a little mea culpa in on page 15 of the staff report and then anybody who picked up a hard copy here i've actually crossed it out mm -hmm. uh the first paragraph at the top of page 15 the last sentence is actually from an old staff report that somehow in yeah. all of my proofing i missed um but it's clearly from a different application so yeah. there's there's no frontage on granite shed lane for this project mm -hmm. Got it. All you, James. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to walk through the landscape um, uh, design as we have it. Um, as we've discussed, this building is a beautiful example of uh, historic downtown Montpelier architecture. We also find that the landscape that fronts that building up onto Main Street is also wonderful, and we are not going to mess with it at all. Um, as you come down the access and drive uh towards the east we've created a sort of a drop-off sequence um, with a couple of granite chunk uh, seating benches from there as you move west uh, we go past the fence in memory garden which you won't see but that would be a space for um, residents to sit outside and enjoy the perennials and shrubs that we have in there um, moving further east um, to the north of the parking lot we have um, called for a series of grasses and then also Boston Ivy to be trained up on the building. That will, uh, the idea for that is to cover the extended foundation due to the floodplain uh, level we have to be up at. To the south there, you can see the existing silver maples. There are um, 
two, almost three, essentially one is a giant double trunk silver maple. Um, they are huge, beautiful trees and will cast ample shade um, down on the parking lot. From there, as you head further east, you can see the cedar screen that is existing. It is our intention to keep this cedar screen um, and we will be walking the uh, cedars with an arborist and come up with a management plan and with the contractor and work through um, whatever needs to happen to preserve these as best we can. Any cedar um, that is harmed will be replaced uh, by construction. If you've had a chance to look at it, it is um, essentially a cedar hedge that has grown up. So it's not a series of individual uh, tree plantings. There's almost like 90 trunks coming up there. So we feel very confident or I feel confident that uh, we'll be able to maintain that screening. And in fact, um, you know, enhance it with fertilization and other steps as advised by the arborist. Um, as you can see, just to the west of that cedar um, row, there is a sidewalk or a path that we have um, circumnavigating the building for residents to walk along. Um, as you come west on that path, north of the building, you'll come to um, the sort of uh, our area of open patio, uh, bluestone paving, um, granite chunk seat benches, and shade tolerant perennials. Um, we think this will be a really beautiful uh, asset for the um, residents and we are also uh, above our um, required landscaping um, uh, minimum uh, quite quite easily. So um, I think we covered that as well. So I think that covers the landscape. All righty. Excellent presentation. I think you guys have, seems like you guys have done this before. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> um, what do you think? Public comment first, or we go through the stuff? I would go public comment first. Okay. Uh, could we take off the share screen, Brian or James? Thank you. At this time, we're going to, I guess, entertain our first public comment session here. Um, who is in the queue to go first? Um, Diane and Lou. So, Diane Soffron and Lou Friedland have been on since very beginning Ka Catherine I see you have your hand up do you need to get off shortly um Diane and Lou have been on since about 20 minutes before the meeting started I can wait okay thanks Catherine hi am I on yes yes Go you ahead. are if you could just make sure to reintroduce yourselves and what uh property you have sure so I'm Diane Sovereign and, and I'm Lou Friedland and we live at 24 St Paul Street uh pretty much directly behind the Gary Hall. With a little diagram that's right up against the uh, hedges. And the dumpsters. And the dumpsters. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, um, so shall I just repeat the things that I wrote to you, Meredith? Um, well, the, the board has, the board has read your email um, and they've also had um, I summarized some of your comments. So I, I don't know if you have to read the whole thing. You can summarize them and, and sure. maybe um, if you have any specific questions or things, items that you want the board to address or things you want answered from the applicant, just clarify those. Okay. So, um, Hold on a second. Oh, oh go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Technical glitch here. We're good. Go ahead. Okay. So um, there were four, basically four questions that we had or issues that we uh, wanted to bring up. We did take a look, a pretty good look at um, the various documents and uh, drawings, um, so the site plans and the, the renderings. Um, so the first thing was that there is a reference to a construction fence along the line of disturbance. And we're assuming, and would like a, just, I suppose, to be clar have a clarification. We assume that that's going to be temporary, being put up during the time of construction. And um, it obviously it should be on the Gary Home side of the cedars to protect the cedars from the construction, um, as well as protecting us as well on being on the other side of the cedars. So there was that issue of the construction fence that we just like those clarifications on. And then we did notice <laughs> in the landscape plan, but not in the other uh, architectural plans, 
that there was a reference to a proposed six foot IP, uh, IPE fence and dumpster enclosure. So the dumpster enclosure we understand and that was clarified at that meeting of the design advisory board that that was going to go around the entire dumpster and that's that's it, great. Um, but the plan of the landscaping shows that the six foot high fence is going to be running all along the cedars on our side of the cedars. Um, in the rendering, the fence cuts through our house <laughs> and goes up against one of the corners. And so it does not appear in any of the other renderings. And so we wanted clarification about the location, the location or whether in fact there is going to be a six foot high fence running along the cedars. The cedars. Um, it really can't be on our side because it will completely um, make the back of our house inaccessible to us if we wanna have it painted or any kind of work being done on our side of the line. So we did want some clarification about that. So one reason uh, that this idea of a six foot fence um, immediately up against our house uh, doesn't work is that we can't get to the back of our house. And the other is that the whole point of having this very nice cedar natural fence, which I'm very appreciative that it's going to be um, maintained and taken care of, uh, won't be of any use to us if we can't see it, if there's a six foot fence on our side of it. So we, you know, that was probably the thing that was of most concern to us. Um, and we would like a clarification about that. And we're registering our, you know, that we really don't want that on our side of the cedar fence. And it was only in the landscape yeah. uh, plan. It was, it did yeah. not appear anywhere else. Can you just okay. hold on one? Oh. Yes. Here we are. Yeah. So, it's hard to tell who was talking here. Yeah. No, that was Lou. That was Lou <laughs> and it. Diane. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, so Lou, I mean, Don or Brian, do you guys have any comments thus far on, or quick uh, answers? Yeah, I, this is James, <laughs> landscape architect. Um, I, I, I'm going to admit there's an error on that drawing. I have that fence is drawn on your setback line, and right. um, it should have been drawn on the property line. Uh, that is uh, a mistake on my end. So the, the, the fence will absolutely not be on your property. So, so um, I, yeah. If you're going I, I to could, have, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was also going to also speak to the construction fence. That is a temporary fence for tree protection, right. and that'll come down. So the temporary fence will be on the seed on your side of the cedars, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. And the only question about a six foot fence being on your side, well, first of all, mm -hmm. the maintenance building is going to be directly behind our house. So I don't know where you would have a cedar fence, uh, a six foot fence. Mm -hmm. on your side of the cedars. Um, mm -hmm. And then also, how could you maintain the cedars if you've got a six foot fence running along your side of them? Um, so what traditionally happens is when we, we are designing properties and we're considering a fence on a property, we want, what happens is we show that fence on the property line and then we have to get um, onto site and with the subcontractor and actually find out exactly where that fence will go. Okay. Um, so there's um, the process would be we would meet up there and lay out that fence and make sure it, it um, wasn't in, 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 in any way impacting the cedars. Um, and we had room to fit it between the maintenance shed and so forth. Um, in terms of maintaining the uh, cedars, uh, you know, what would happen there would be primarily uh, root injections, and that would probably want to happen on both sides of the property line, both mm -hmm. sides of the cedars, so those roots yeah. are properly yeah. taken care of. Um, and any uh, sort of trimming or arbor uh, work would be done before the fence went up, and then, you know, that that sort of work wouldn't happen for a long time and could happen with ladders. So I think we could maintain the cedars and have that fence. Um, but I do agree uh, the fence will not be on your property. Okay. No, no, but, but the, so is, is it understood then that the, the fence will not be on our side That's of the cedars? Said. Well, not necessarily on our property. Right. I mean, obviously it won't be on our property, but it won't be on our side of the cedars. 
it will be on the Gary home side of these cedars. So, My understanding is those cedars, and as I was saying, they're a hedge, so the trunks kind of have, there's about a four foot width, even more, where those trunks are kind of coming up. And my understanding is that um, straddles the property line. Uh, so we would have to do it on our side of the it, cedar. There's, okay. actually, there's actually a double, there's a double row of them behind most right. of our house. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, you know, you've got, hedging. you know, there's, there's, about maybe about a three foot space in between the two of them. Yeah, more or less. yeah, that's, that's right. So I, I, in my, I just went actually there this morning just to double check because I hadn't looked closely um, since the snow had started melting, and it right. seems you know very difficult to put a fence between those two rows in any sort of. Oh yeah, right. yeah. no, yeah. that doesn't exist. So it sounds like it sounds like you're, you got several questions here, and it sounds like you got some answers and clarification. We, we weren't quite finished though. Yeah. Okay. So just a reminder, so so just a reminder, you're having a good conversation, which is great. Right. Usually we try and direct the conversation to the board yeah. instead of mm -hmm. you guys okay. having a conversation with each other. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's okay. Um, we did, we just, did have one more question, though. Yeah. We can direct it to the board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, because currently, as as the cedar hedge goes right now, it's very, very tall, but actually quite thin. I mean, we can easily see from our kitchen, we see right through them and we see the dumpsters mm -hmm. and we see the parking lot. And it might be that the maintenance of them should be that they are shorter, but more dense. And, and I think that that's pretty important to us yeah. is to have a, a nice green, dense hedge between us. That, that's that's quite, it, it's quite a little, important. It's a little bit easier to understand that when you're on our end because we're so close. When you look at mm -hmm. it from the Gary home side, mm -hmm. from some distance, it looks it looks great. Yeah. But it is really lush up at the top. And as Lou said, very spare down at the bottom, mostly because of the, um, the snow that kept being pushed up against the base of the hedges in the winter but we understand that will change because of the building that will be there so that's fine All right. um, the, so the only great. other question that we had what do you want to ask about that uh the it seemed like on on the various um drawings the architectural drawings it seemed like <laughs> from how we read it and maybe we didn't read it correctly the uh the pad for the dumpsters was actually a little bit over the uh the in montpelier's the, well, the, the setback over the gary home um, setback at, on the end of my, not on our line but at the yeah. at the corner of well where the dumpster is going to yeah. be yeah. and uh so we just thought someone could clarify that the only reason we bring it up is you know uh we just don't want things to be inadvertently damaging whatever yep. foliage Gross. there is in that corner i think we yeah we still understand the concern here meredith has a quick response to that um sure. that question yep so i you know the just a general note is that the dumpster enclosure doesn't have to be within those setback lines, oh, right? Those setback lines are for the primary building. Okay. Um, and so I think that that was a, a space issue and a condition of the permit is going to be the maintenance of those cedar hedges. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's, I think there, it looks like there's gonna be enough room there to accommodate both of those. Okay. Um, and with the mm -hmm. dumpsters being enclosed, there's going to be less of that shifting around also okay. with the fence there. So I, I don't think you'll have as much issues with that. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. We'll mute ourselves now. Okay. <laughs> um, can, I, can I just make a response on the fence? I, I'd like to just back up for a second and clarify a couple of things. Go ahead, Brian. Um, so um, just to sort of back up to our thinking on the fence is, um, you know, we as much as our intent is to maintain the cedars the intent of having that fence was to provide some additional screening between the projects and the, the neighboring properties on the other side of the cedars 
Um, so the, the placement of the fence is, is right on the property line, which probably effectively when you're standing there is on the neighboring property side of the cedars, if you were gonna say it's one side or the other. Um, but um, because the intention was to provide additional screening, um, the applicant is willing to remove the fence from the project if, it, if it's preferable to the neighbors to have the cedars as screening rather than having the cedars and a fence as screening. So I just wanted to clarify those, those couple. Yeah, I, I don't think it is required by the regulations, the, the nice side of the fence. So it's, it's, a, it's a natural wood fence. It's Ipe wood, which you may be familiar from like decking and such. Yep. Um, finished side of the fence would be facing the adjoining properties if it was included in the project. Well, so the board the board will review this you know based on the landscaping and screening requirements um i think we got a lot, enough information to move forward um and i think that uh it seems like the major concerns were were addressed here um so i think we gotta move things along and um catherine gordon did you have uh any comments uh yeah i did thank you um <laughs> I had, are we talking about just the landscaping stuff now, or are we talking about the whole building? Anything on the application that you want to talk about, your concerns. Okay. Um, I guess I had a concern because we're part of the historic district also. And if you look at the historic thing, um, I mean, it, historically, we've not had a building abutting our property and we're, um, you know, like the only historic building. I'm at 15 Brown Street, so we're directly behind the cedars on the other side, um, on your left as you're facing the back, the back of the property. Um, so, I mean, my main concern is that it's a one-story building, but in looking at it in reference to the Gary home itself, it looks like a two-story building because of the floodplain. So I think that that is gonna make a big difference to our views from our upstairs windows and downstairs windows, although we see the hedge, which is good, um, but the upstairs windows. And then also I have concerns, which I brought at the other informal meeting about the noise, because it sounds like the um, mechanics of the building are gonna, be, are gonna be right at our property line. So that was a concern, probably more so than the lighting, because it looks like the lighting is addressed uh, pretty carefully there. Um, and then also just looking at the plans, um, like if you look out our back door, the gazebo is actually pretty close to the property line, but the building you're purporting is gonna be even closer to the property line. And I don't see actually, honestly, how you're going to fit a hedgerow, a sidewalk in the building itself in the allotted area, because um, the hedgerow right now is pretty wide on its own. But I just concerned about just the closeness of the building to the um, the property line. Um, and then also, I'm glad you addressed the um, the water runoff issue. Uh, one thing. We've been in our house almost 30 years, and um, they redid the road Brown Street. on Brown Street a while, a long time ago. But when they did it, the um, it was not my understanding is it was not done correctly. So that when there is a heavy rain, the drain in front of our house actually backs up and runs on either side of our home and lands somewhere, I don't even know where it lands, but I'm assuming it lands on Gary home land. So my concern is not only for your building, but our building, if everything's pushed back toward the property line even further. So I really think that something needs to be looked at either correcting things in front of our house or making sure that things are not shifted in the building of the proposed project because I think that really is going to impact the water situation for both properties and you guys may be above the floodplain but we're on it and your building it's going to you know could cause other erosion stuff at your foundation even if you're above the floodplain um, and that's also my concern is just that it's raising everything up so that it's very tall even though it's a one-story building, supposedly. 
Um, and then I guess that's mainly it, but I guess that's mainly my concern. So, so, so my understanding is the, the building proximity, of the building to the property line and the runoff are your two major concerns that you would like us to dig in and review. Proximity and the, just the, I mean, if it's, if our building's in a historic building, their building's a historic building, and then you have this big new structure, yep. I feel like I'm getting penalized as a historic building when I have limitations on what I'm able to do. And, but yet the surroundings can be impacted. However, you know, yep. like things right up to the edge. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your for comments. Of, you know, perspective will certainly help us in our um, review. Is there anyone uh, else that wishes to speak on this application? Yes, Catherine. So, well, hold on one second. Yep. So Diane just wanted to have one thing to say in response to what Brian had talked about, okay. about potentially removing the fence. Yep. Diane, you can unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. So um, since we have the um, the ability to say that we'd like to waive that fence. We wanted to say that we want to waive that fence. So we we do we not want, want the cedar hedge. We, we just want to have the natural nice cedar dense. hedge, nice and dense behind us. We don't exactly. want any six foot IPE fence behind us at all. Yep. So uh, not, you know anywhere. 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 <laughs> no. Since it sounded like that was. Uh, that was our prerogative as the abutting um, homeowners to waive that. I uh, wanted to make it clear that we want to waive that. Uh, so it, to. I don't know if it's your prerogative to waive it, but it sounded. But the Brian had said that that might be an option. So it, it's ultimately the the DRB's decision on how to deal with that. Um, but it's good to get on the record that you, if you have the option, you don't want the fence there behind your house. Right. It did seem like that uh, the two different people were saying slightly different things. So, you know, uh, the landscaper was saying that that wasn't going to be there, and, as I understood it. And then the other gentleman said that it was and we could. And it, was, it sounded like it was there more for us than for them and that we could opt out. So, well, your comment. Your comment from your perspective on, you know, what would be appropriate screening is helpful for the DRB to sort of look at the evidence and what's been proposed to figure out what best fits the regulations. And we also understand the applicants willing to, to amend uh, amend things uh, based on some of your comments. So uh, I think we yeah. got the information yeah. to, to move on here. Thank you, Diane. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this application before we dive into the um, review? Um, Kathy and Caitlin were both on just viewing, so board members can All right. go back to questions if they had them. Um, is that it from the standpoint of the uh, public, public comment? Uh, unless you had something you wanted to say. Okay. Um, okay. So let's um, let's go go through the uh, the, criteria, the criteria. Yes. And. Uh, um, I guess before the first item of the staff part was this issue, a little bit of discussion on the setback waiver, which, you know, I don't have any issue with approving. I'm, I'm curious whether 0.25 is really um, what you want to be asking for, <laughs> whether we don't, you know, you can go up to five feet. I would hate to be back here uh, if something, you know, if something changes or we have it on the record that's such, so specified. Yeah, except but, that an well, a five foot waiver is a lot. No, I'm not more. saying. <laughs> but point this is just a, a e that that encroaches on the sure. follow the uh, the setback, and yeah, it's four inches. Um, but uh, I think if yeah. we, if say in the future it was the roof was replaced and uh, it moved an inch either direction, I don't know if we really want to get into that level of uh, of detail. Yeah, I guess my, my point was that, you know, maybe we round it to a foot or something like that, but uh, that's the that's the choice of the applicant, not us. That was just sort of a comment that I had um, is that we, you know, you're asking for a little bit of a buffer and then maybe maybe we want to, um, you know, do that, but um, we can we can move on if that's not something that needs to be discussed. 
just a reminder we have the application that's before us that's we correct. aren't required yes. to we, we aren't being that's asked correct. to improve yeah. upon the application for them thank you meredith she'll keep us straight <laughs> sometimes <laughs> When I don't take you on a long and winding road first. Uh, you do. You do a good job. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So the site plan criteria is where we're at. I think we addressed maybe these issues, but we'll make sure that we. Site plan or just the. the general like, standards. Yeah, I mean I don't know. Did you want to go into the general standards? Um, That's where the stormwater stuff is, but. Right. So, but we have. Oh, <laughs> um, you, you're starting to lose. I'm sorry to lose it. Yes. <laughs> um, we have like a three minute recess here to read. Yeah. Um, we're going to, you, you have to call it. Yeah, uh, I would just, can we have like a five minute recess before we, while well, we chart the rest of this meeting um, to try and make it a little more efficient? Uh, sorry for the disorganization. So just a quick five minute recess. Yep. See you in five minutes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so I guess okay. two remaining issues here, um, it, you know, we would like to discuss. Uh, one is uh, drainage and one is the design review criteria. Um, did board members get a chance to review the uh, sort of minutes from the design review committee? Yep. So in your packet were the design review recommendation forms, and I had meant to include the design review minutes, but I circulated those via email as well just to make sure you had a, a clear understanding of all the items that the design review committee discussed um, and and went through and approved during their process. Um, they reviewed pretty much everything on the exterior, um, including the landscaping, all the fencing, um, the screening for the mechanicals on the roof, um, the you know the, the the specifics of the the finishes on the side of the building, um, all of those things were looked at by the design review committee and approved. Um, their only recommendation, which is something that the board can include as a condition of approval if it wishes, is the requirement that the cedar hedges be maintained um, as adequate screening. Perfect. Um, now, as an applicant. Uh accept the recommendations and suggestions of the design review committee. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the next item um, is uh, just talking a little bit about the drainage on the site. So if you could just provide a quick summary of where the water's flowing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we do have a concern about, um, you know, some water flowing over to Brown street. So maybe if you could just talk a little bit about that and uh, get that sorted out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, essentially all along the north and um, east sides of the building, um, there is a, um, a French drain strip there. So right now, um, most of it comes either down from the adjacent building to the north. Um, I think that perhaps some of it does then drain to the east currently, but we're going to intercept all that surface drainage uh, in a French drain on the far side of the sidewalk. Um, and that'll be directed to the municipal drainage system. Um, all the building roof is internally drained, um, so that will go directly to the to the underground stormwater system. And in the parking lot, there's a couple of catch basin. Um, and also, as noted in the application, then um, this is sort of a different topic, but the DPW requested that we control the peak discharge from the 25-year storm so as not to... Um, overwhelmed downstream drainage facilities that are owned by the city. Um, so we provided underground um, stormwater storage uh, so that, and, and we provided modeling that shows that we're not, um, we're in fact decreasing the peak discharge in the 25 year storm uh, to the city's drainage facilities. Board members have any questions on drainage? Just make a comment that I think the uh, proposed uh, uh, application has an improvement to the existing uh, water handling. Absolutely. And yeah, we thank your coordination with the city on that um, that pipe. I think that that's you know going to be a great addition to uh, uh, the infrastructure that we are, are at within the city. So thank you. Um, 
So I, that's all I have. Is there any additional comments? Applicant have any closing comments here before we move this meeting along? If satisfied, I think that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Any, any comments from the board? Joe, Abby, Jean, any outstanding questions? I'm here. No, it's an exceptional presentation. Thank you. Then, um, then I'll entertain a motion. So I'll make the motion to uh, adjourn the public hearing on this application. And uh, upon the adjournment of the board's business for the evening, move to deliberative session for discussion and potential action. So motion by Kevin. Second. Second by Jean. Uh, Kevin, how do you vote? I vote yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jean? Yes. And Rob votes yes. Um, motion passes unanimously. Um, okay. There is no um, other of business except for that our next meeting is scheduled for April 18th. Yes, Meredith? That is the next regularly scheduled meeting if we had an application, but because none of tonight's applications were continued, we actually will not have an April 18th meeting, which oh, unless wonderful. the board for some reason wants one for training. I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good. So then yeah. the next meeting would be Monday, May 2nd. Monday, May 2nd. Alrighty. Monday, May 2nd. Okie dokie. Um, Boy, time flies. And I'm, I'll send around an email with our deliberative session link in a couple minutes. I got so wrapped up in tonight's meeting, I didn't set one up. All right. Thank you. Um, so I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Abby. Second. Motion by Abby, second by Catherine. Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jean, Rob votes yes. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for your patience this evening, and uh, we will we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.